Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Poppin' with Cracking and Steve. About to react to this Choice TV vid. It's titled, Why Beyonce Turned Off Her Personality, The Real Truth. Oh, oh. Um, I mean, I do know that she doesn't do interviews anymore. She doesn't like, you know, talking to people. <laughs> so I feel like she had uh, bad experiences in the past. People like twisting her words and trying to make her look stupid, et cetera, et cetera. So she was like, you know what? F all y'all. I'm going to just, you know, do me make my music, and y'all ain't getting nothing else from me. So, I feel like she's stuck to that. Uh, but yeah, let's hear what Choice has to say. Let's watch. Some viewers might find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi, my loves. It's Destin Choice, and you're watching Choice TV. For today's video, I really had to get on here and talk about Beyonce. I don't want to be the one millionth person that gets on the internet and talk about Beyonce, because Beyonce doesn't really bother anybody. She doesn't really bug anybody, and Beyonce doesn't really do anything. But realistically, I gotta get on here and talk about this because I feel like everybody's thinking it, but nobody really says it. But I really wanna get on here and talk about parasocial relationships of a lot of entertainers. And I wanna get on here and talk about the fact that Beyonce doesn't really have much of a personality and why she probably doesn't have much of a personality. And what really inspired this video was this. Beyonce recently came out with her hair care line, Secret. Mm. Two, three, four. Now that sequence is known for the quality and what it does for your hair, I think it's about time I show y'all what it does for my hair. I love the lather, it's very soothing, the smells. Because my color was fresh, we used the rice and rose water ritual. Come on, edges. There's nothing in the world like the conditioner. I love it, there's nothing like it. Mm -hmm. Beyonce posting her hair care routine was a very intimate moment that we oftentimes oh, see from a lot of our oh. favorite YouTube bloggers and hair tutorial gurus. However, Beyonce was criticized in the comment section of a lot of people criticizing her Sweet. because a lot of people feel she only up. shows her personality <laughs> or tries to be in her influencer bag when it benefits her. If you notice, Beyonce doesn't show anything. You look at Beyonce's eyes and you don't feel anything. You don't see anything. And we all know that eyes are the windows to the soul. But it's really odd how sometimes when Beyonce gets on the internet, and she tries to interact with people, she never responds to comments, she never likes comments, and she never says thank you on social media or anything. It almost seems like she gets on the internet and then she shuts off. Because people but are I negative the and the nasty and anytime all Beyonce the time. And interacts or connects with people, it just seems like she's reading off of a teleprompter. Her eyes get all big and she just seems, like, empty. And that's what makes people kind of concerned because they think to themselves, how are you even on the internet and you're not going to let people connect with you? Don't get me, don't get it twisted. Of course, it's entitlement. People don't have to support or like or enjoy Beyonce or even pay her any attention. Beyonce comes from a generation where it was nice for a lot of artists to have that mystique aspect to them. We don't expect people like Sade to speak. We don't expect people like even Dolly Parton to speak and connect with people. But even at that, even they will go out of their way to try to sometimes make a post, communicate with their audience, maybe like a comment here and there. And Beyonce does none of that. But there's a deeper explanation as to why. And the reason why a lot of us can't connect with a lot of celebrities is because, again, a lot of us know that anytime a celebrity does something, it's always because they want something in return. And people like Lizzo are the epitome of that. Yes, please be positive about your body. Please use our movement to empower yourself. That's mm -hmm. the point. But the people who created this movement, oh, the body. big women, big brown and black women, queer women, are not benefiting from the mainstream success of it. She'll be so quick to say this is our movement, our moment, LGBT. Girl, I'm not claiming that. I don't want that. Love yourself. <laughs> and then be so no shame, but I don't, I don't like the attach. I don't even like the attachment that people try to make with, oh, black women. So you trying to put fatness on black people, black women specifically? No, I don't own this. Internet and bitch, she complains. And now look, you lose that. And then start throwing it back make again it and then embrace her size. It's just a broad example that in media, celebrities... And, and I've watched several videos that uh, prove that this whole fat positivity movement, wasn't it started by this white man who had a fetish for, for fat people, for fat women? Like his woman was real fat and then he wanted to bring other fat women together so so he could, you know, uh, revel in his, his fetish. <laughs> That that's what that's what I've seen with my own two eyeballs. So painters mm. only do things that benefit them. If it means connecting with their audience, trying to be sweet and connect and be the whole influencer, a lot of celebrities will very much do that. Perfect examples are Camila Cabello and Shawn Mendes during the 2020 riots. Now during the riots and protests, Shawn Mendes and Camila Cabello were one of the first entertainers to go out protest. And for some odd reason, the minute they were out there, there were cameras following them. There was a news crew following them. Mm. And my main thing is this. 
how did the news crew Sucks. know that they were out there? You know what I mean? They have face masks on. You can't even recognize them because they're wearing average clothes and everything. This clearly shows you that only time entertainers try to connect and be, you know, I'm a human being. I relate just like you. That's so it ironic that she was out there them. doing this. That's why a lot of times when I see entertainers talk path. about, you know, fight the power, BLM, all that stuff, I always kind of side at them because I never really know if they're being genuine or if they're just doing this because it's great media training and excellent PR. It also goes back to parasocial relationships. A lot of times, entertainers try to prey on the fact that a lot of us have parasocial relationships with them. So they'll pretend to care about causes and pretend to care about you and pretend to try to appeal to you for great media training. I mean, look at the Keaton Jones situation. That little boy from Tennessee who was out here crying because kids at school were talking about his nose and the way he talked and so much more. While Keaton's viral video triggered oh, an outpouring of A-list support, but also sparked some unwanted attention mm -hmm. for his family. They make fun of my nose. They call me ugly. They say I have no friends. I just want to say you're inspiring so many people um, with your message and your authenticity. J-Lo, Demi Lovato, Katie Perry, just things. a few of the stars standing with bully? Keaton. Pitch Perfect 3's Haley Steinfeld even invited him to tomorrow's Hollywood premiere. The young star of Stranger Things, Millie Bobby Brown, tweeted, I think you're so cool, Keaton. I want to be your friend. And some players from this the Tennessee great. Titans Sorry. where Keaton lives. If you want to do a good thing and be like, hey, come out to my show, do that. But you're so cool. Right, we're just gonna lie. Invited Keaton and his family to come to the next home game. And some players asked if they can go have lunch with him this week at his school. The boy's mother posted the video on her Facebook page on Friday, then updating her page saying in part, overwhelmed is the understatement of the world right now. Just to find out that kids at school were making fun of him because he was saying racial remarks that were upsetting Ooh. a lot of students and his parents and family got all types of Confederate flags on their pay. Ooh. But I'm getting a little sidetracked. Anytime you get a piece of what Beyonce Hot cares tweets. about or a piece of what anything Beyonce likes or enjoys, in a nutshell, the way celebrity culture works, it has to some way somehow benefit them as well instead of just generally trying to spread awareness or trying to connect with people. But let's put it this way. I think Beyonce just has boundaries. I think Beyonce has a spiritual force field in front of her because she doesn't want people to be able to connect, put things together, or go to fill up who she is or what she got going on. She's, not She's had enough of that. Mm -hmm. And I'll elaborate on why. And I hate to break it to y'all, but Beyonce at one point about the did use to show her personality. If you grew up listening to Beyonce way back during her Destiny Child era, way back in the day before she really became mainstream like she is now, Beyonce did need to show her personality. She used to be very yeah, I've seen the goofy clips. and she used to be kind of ditzy I've read and awkward, compilations about it. But she used to show her personality a lot and try to engage with people. However, the more Beyonce engaged with people and, and the more famous shit. she got, she realized that she didn't really like engaging with people. A video from damn near 20 years ago has resurfaced on the internet of a fan walking up to Beyonce being very disrespectful to her group mates. And she tried her best to keep it classy, but you could tell she was irritated. Hi. How you doing? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That's so rude. I see looking them in the face. Thank you. Nice to meet you. In the clip, you can see Beyonce literally quickly passed it to Kelly and Michelle, and Kelly and Michelle quickly snatched it as the fan was trying to reach for it back. Thank you. <laughs> She's like, anyway. Thank you. On top of that, throughout the years, she has made it clear that she has a very hard nasty. time adjusting to so fame. Nasty. Hell, so even to this day, she has a hard time adjusting to everybody in her face, in her business, or always walking up on her because there's nowhere she can go in the world where people don't know her. Yes. Do you miss going to the mall and going to buy fish and chips and going to watch films with your friends and stuff yes. like that? Yes. How do you compensate for that? How do you now spend time with your loved ones? Um, I do spend time with my loved ones all the time. My family travels with me and I'm fortunate because when I'm away from home, I bring home with okay. me. The, the time that it really gets to me the most is when I'm with my family eating and people come and, and ask for autographs and paparazzi all over the place. Yeah, it's, it's tough I mean, just from hearing that interview, that should give you everything you need to know. People are too infatuated with her to the point where they don't really give her much space. Then, think about the fact that when she does interviews, people are so invested in her opinions about things that don't really matter. Your husband, Jay-Z, had a lot to do with Rihanna's early career. Back in February, he said he thought everyone should support her in that 
mess with Chris Brown. How do you feel about that whole thing? Well, I, I think she's doing a lot better. She is such a very talented woman and very smart. And um, I think it's really important in those times of need that people give people their privacy. And that's where the parasocial relationship comes in. Because oftentimes when Beyonce stand offish or she's not as open as she used to be, people think that she's a bitch and that she's bratty and she's entitled and she doesn't appreciate her fans. I'm sure she does appreciate okay. her fans. But I'm sure she doesn't appreciate all the vultures and crazy people out there. For one, if Beyonce even shares anything personal, people pick it apart, break it apart, twist it, bop it, turn it, and throw it right back in her face. And it makes you wonder, why did she even open up in the first place? Twist it. But this happened with this. There are moments where suddenly you watching this will vent, and then you immediately regret it because you think to yourself, fuck, now this person can throw it in my face if they ever get upset. A lot of us have been there where we've opened up and vented to people, and they just... Going in our face. So, what I learned very early on in the internet. You gotta be very careful what you share because people will throw that back at you every chance they fucking get. Well, didn't you say this and didn't you do that and you saying this now, but what about nasty, trifling? <laughs> so, you gotta keep your business to yourself, okay? So, I, I feel her, all right? Most of us are And just imagine Beyonce's level. Like, what? Just like how Beyonce be traumatized when she shares personal things about herself. I mean, look at her pregnancy. Y'all remember when she literally was pregnant with Blue Ivy? And back then, people like Wendell Williams, the capital P, Wendy Williams was out here saying that she was faking her pregnancy and people were accusing her of wearing a prosthetic belly. I couldn't wait to talk to you about this Beyonce baby bump conspiracy rumor, fake pregnancy thing that's being alleged. I just don't even know where to start, so I'm gonna take you through it step by step. Here's how the rumor got started. Beyonce recently, like last Sunday, appeared on an Australian show. And when she sat down, the baby bump squashed, bent, and crumpled. Hold on. <laughs> show as ridiculous pregnant. as it sounds, you know I did my research and we've got the video to prove, hold on. So people started questioning, was this baby bump real or fake? Now, being a woman who, you know, I had my baby bump, many of you have had baby bumps, I never remember my baby bump squat. Just take a look at the video. Okay, so here's Beyonce, and she's walking out, and everything is fine, she's five months pregnant. Then she sits down, and, okay, now we're gonna rerun it until you, you see it. <laughs> Let's do it in slow no, motion. You'll notice it. she's either giving birth to a Frisbee, or Stewie from Family Guy. Look, look at the shape. Look, do you see? There it is, there it is. Not the oh. What that is, B? And then people were saying that her belly was folded and she probably has a demonic demon baby in her body. Oh, and all types of that. shit. Yeah, that's crazy. Which is a little bit insensitive. Then y'all remember that Luminati. era where a lot of people were trying to ask her before she even had a baby, when is she going to have a baby? When is she going to have a baby? Like that one time she was sitting with AJ Calloway from 106 Apart. And he asked her, when are her and Jay-Z finally going to settle down and have kids? I'm getting back. Think about little ones for yourself, maybe? Eventually. When, when it happens, it happens. Yeah. yeah. You want a family? Get her uterus. I'm not sure. I definitely want a family. I'm, I'm too close to my mother. Does she give you laughter? This is a good way to get me to talk about. I'm just asking, because he's hilarious. That's he's very, funny, really, but a lot of people really don't know clever. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you, did you get, keep you laughing a lot? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the question I actually really, really want to ask is, does does Jay want to be a father? Does he want? To Are you father? serious? I gotta ask. You gotta ask Jay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So next time I see him, I ask. Him. You should. Well, I know you want to. I'm just, you know. Are you trying to play a little Cupid or something? Yeah, well, no, y'all already married. Yeah, we so are. We are. You know, that's first comes marriage, then come. Mm. <laughs> Isn't that a song? I don't know. And then you also how pissed off the pregnancy like she got. Now, fun fact, Beyonce get off actually her had a miscarriage so around this time. Much. And we didn't even know this until she oh. came out with her documentary where she basically showed off her pregnancy with Blue Ivy. See, this is why you should mind your own business. People didn't know that you had a miscarriage. So you made a conscious choice to share that. Why? Well, I felt Some like women also can't have kids. Some women have complications. So asking that and being that pushy is so disgusting. Like, bro, get some fucking home training. What's wrong with you people? Ugh. There are so many couples that go through that. Mm -hmm. And it was a big part of my story. It, it was 
That's one sad. of I didn't the know that. hardest things I've been through. That's why she was annoyed. And how did y'all keep that a secret? It's one of the reasons I, I did not share I was pregnant the second time because mm -hmm. you don't know what's mm -hmm. going to happen. And, and it, that was hard because all of my, my family and my friends knew and we celebrated. I'm not the only person that goes through that. So many people go through it. And mm -hmm. in the end, I have my daughter. Mm -hmm. And there is hope. I feel so fortunate. Did you live in fear, though, every month? I did. For the second pregnancy, did you live in fear? I did. Mm -hmm. And, and when you were dancing on stage and you're doing all the work? Yes. Yeah. Were you afraid? I was afraid. But my doctor told me that I was completely healthy and don't be crazy and mm -hmm. paranoid and to live my life. Now, most of us didn't even know that she had miscarriages until after she had Blue and until 2013 when she opened up the body with Oprah. But yet people were begging her and telling her, when is she going to have kids? And she's hitting 30. She might as well have kids already. People would even grill Beyonce about not doing events, not doing pop-ups. And people even grill Beyonce about not even doing meet and greets anymore, even though her fans go so hard for her and they're willing to pay upmost $10,000 oh, for concert tickets just to see her up close. And a lot of times she doesn't even do meet and greets. That's why I see why she charges y'all when it comes to showing her personality. And I get it because a lot of people who are as big as she is or big entertainers always need to have their guard up unless there's a benefit. Because, like, I mean, the you... minute you lower your guard, people will walk all over and take advantage. So you Thanks. might as well make sure you make it benefit you and work in your favor. Beyonce just wants to be paid for a service and to live her life. It's our choice for whether or not you want to support her because there's just no benefit in being kind to strangers all the time. I mean, look at this situation. Kelly Rowland went to an event and she wanted to be kind and donate her time in terms of taking photos with supposed fans. One supposed fan tried to oh, embarrass her and tried to accuse her for being responsible for animal cruelty. This goes out to all the animals that were tortured and murdered so Kelly can wear their fur. Fur trade! Death trade! Fur trade! Death trade! Fur trade! Death trade! Fur trade! Death trade! Death trade! Death trade. Death trade. Death trade. Death trade. Kelly Rowland has blood on her hands! Kelly Rowland has blood on her hands! Now this is wild. Why need to be slapped? Every last one. Yeah, girl, I would have been dead. Girl, get out of there. These people are ridiculous, bro. This had a lot to do with something she was promoting and she wanted to take photos with so-called fans. They didn't mm -hmm. pay to just be in there. This was done obviously to try to embarrass her and this is why sometimes a lot of entertainers aren't kind. This is why some of y'all shouldn't be surprised when you meet certain celebrities and they aren't nice or kind because the way the world is... People are only nice and kind to those that they can connect to, benefit from, and relate to. So if Beyonce doesn't even know who you are, you can't really be shocked that she doesn't want to extend her peace, life, and kindness to you. It makes you wonder why a lot of times when a celebrity tries to put themselves out there, or they try to literally share something personal, or try to do something social to make the world, you know, like them, it makes me understand why they want to make sure to get something in return. Like when they try to align themselves with wokeness and political correctness to promote a certain presidential or political candidate in order to make themselves look more sustainable and make themselves look more woke and hip with the shit to their fans. Design some boxer briefs that oh, both men so and women and non-binary people of all um, gender appropriations and the pronouns, everyone is included. I you know, every time you look at a lot of celebrities, they're always on that performative activism bag where if they're even speaking, knowing that it'll get flipped in their favor, they try their best to use their speaking moments as a way to be performative or talk about social political issues. Mm -hmm. We live in a really odd culture where if you even say anything political or social that doesn't follow the popular opinion, you automatically get ostracized and pushed aside. I remember many years ago, before Cardi B blew up, she went on IG Live. She spoke on how she feels like everybody is fake because you have to be performative in order to be taken seriously because it'll inevitably overshadow anything you try to promote. Yeah, my nigga, like, 
like when I became famous, it's because I was speaking shit on my mind. Now I can't even say shit on my mind because it's like, I feel like I'm in, like, if I say something, people gonna be like, oh, you insulting this, you insulting that, you insulting these people, you insulting that, and it's like, damn, my nigga. Yeah, forcing me to be fake. Like, I hate that people's forcing me how to- I talk about this all the time. About how the, the fans, they they criticize these celebrities for every little thing that they do and it's like oh my god you said this and you did this and this is offensive da 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 but then in the same breath it's like hey, everybody's so fake online and y'all y'all all say and do the same thing like there's not that much authenticity you, you wonder why <laughs> because y'all want to cry about every fucking thing so people are afraid to be themselves and to speak their minds that's why it's not very common that's why the people who are fake, they grow so, so quickly and they're, they're able to get these huge followings. Like people are always like, oh, you know, you should have more subscribers and that because I've been on YouTube for a minute now, but I'm never changing who I am. <laughs> I'm not brand friendly. I'm not uh, politically correct. I rub a lot of people the wrong way. People are upset with me on a very regular basis. So that definitely stunts my growth to a certain degree, but I'm not about to switch up and be fake for nobody. It's not giving that. that, that I, I don't want to live like that. And people who, who watch you, they do push you into being fake. It's like they want you to agree with everything that's so politically correct. They want you to always say the, the right thing all the time. And when you don't, then they, they criticize you so heavily. They send you so much hate. That's, this is why I don't read my comments. You have to create some type of distance because it, it will drive you crazy. It'll send you into a fucking depression or it'll make you change up your content so that you are pandering to your audience and you're agreeing with everything that they that they say when well, you're agreeing with the popular opinion because you don't you don't want to receive any backlash like it's just such a, a stupid system that the public has created i be fake i don't like being fake my nigga i was never a fake bitch In order for you to live this type of lifestyle and see all these beautiful views, you gotta be a fake ass person, bro. Mm -hmm. And I hate being fake. I was never a fake bitch. But now I gotta act like shit don't bother me. Like, I gotta act like shit is so cool. People get so like mad I'm when you have a different opinion, too. It's the fucking weirdest shit in the world. They get so pressed when you don't think like them. God forbid you have your own brain and, and, and have your own opinions about life. It's like, oh my God, how could you think that? Why would you say that? This is horrible. And I'm just... <laughs> twisted, twisted place. The they're scared is. of their authenticity being thrown in their face. I mean, look at someone like Sydney Sweeney, for example. Wait, did he say what I just said? Don't give a fuck. And when they are authentic, they're scared of their authenticity being thrown in their face. I mean, look at someone like Sydney Sweeney, for example. Sydney Sweeney is a popular 27-year-old actress from the TV show Too Euphoria. And she was Not kind enough to actually share her mother's 60th birthday on social media with her whole entire fan base. And guess what people did? Instead of wishing her mother a 60th happy birthday, people dug a little bit deeper and people ended up finding a lot of her relatives were actually Trump supporters. They found tons of photos posted all over social media of so her what? relatives that were related to her. Posting up pictures wearing Blue Live Matter flags. This is the rock. thing, and I, I don't agree with this either. Y'all want to shun everybody who's a fucking Trump supporter. Let people believe what the fuck they want to believe and have their own, you know, brains. If they want to support Trump, so? So! <laughs> you can't like somebody because they support Trump? Like, that's so goofy. Bodies wearing Make America Great Again hats and much more. And mind you, Sydney Sweeney wasn't even on that shit. She didn't post anything involving that. But they grilled her for it and tried to cancel her because of what some of her cousins, so uncles, stupid. and relatives so she should have shared that. You, we That's don't sad. really know her political affiliation. I don't share shit about my family. I ain't seen nobody. I've heard people, uh, <laughs> or people have left comments saying, oh, you should react to some videos with, like, your sister. You talk about her sometimes or, like, some of your friends. Fuck no. Fuck no. I, I don't even really be wanting to share my friends in my, in my vlogs, to be honest. I mean, I have, like, started showing them here and there in some of my videos, but very careful with the things that I that I show and my family I would never do that again I actually did it before it was not a good reaction people were being very weird with my little baby nieces that I had in my fucking video so 
No, fuck people. It's relatives that <laughs> are lean more towards the right. And of course, people were so quick to tell her, you need to find better pictures to post. To where she literally had to respond to the backlash and say, you guys, this is wild. The innocent celebration for my mom's milestone 60th birthday has turned into an absurd political statement, which was not the intention. Please not make assumptions. Much love to everyone and happy birthday, mom. I'm it's not surprised that they're Trump supporters. They take look, this whole situation and turn this it looks into country as hell. Country people, a lot of country people are Trump supporters. She right? posts on her own social media. And this is where the parasocial relationships come from. Like, what does that have to do with Give her? She didn't even post that on her social thing. media. People just put the pieces together and saw that she was associated with them and automatically tried to find a reason to cancel her. And it's like, damn, like, she didn't even have to share her mother's 60 year birthday with the world. She could have kept that to herself. But that's a good reason why a lot of times like, don't share anything. <laughs> you know, those social relationships oftentimes cause people to cross yeah, boundaries. Weird, bro. You know, a great example is even Doja Cat. Why Doja Cat being one of the best-selling artists in this past decade Not gets a lot of flack because when she's on live, she can get very snippy with people and call people out on their shit. And it's really a shame because the same people who defended her when she was in all her scandals and the same people who stream about her music, she's quick to tell them to go to hell, I'm blocking you, leave me alone, I'm blocking you, blocking her fan pages and acting stank. And it's really people a shame do because Doja Cat kind of made it clear, I'm not your friend and I'll do whatever I want, kiss my ass. There's a lot of people yeah. I don't like who I don't listen to their music and... And there's a lot of people I don't know that I listen to their music. And if I knew them, I probably wouldn't like them. I listen to a lot of music. And there's no way I would be best friends with every person that I listen to their music. I'm not your friend. I make music and you like it. And if you don't, cool, great. I don't give it. I'm not doing it so that you like me. I'm doing it because it's fun. I love my fans. I love all the people who support me. I love the people who... I wouldn't have this painting in front of me if it wasn't for my fans. I wouldn't have food on my table if it wasn't for my fans. Um, but I'm not giving them all the credit because I do work my ass off, so it's like a 50-50 thing. I don't want to be anything like you. I don't fuck with y'all. I don't. I don't fuck with y'all. <laughs> so y'all the ones giving me the fame. Not me, okay? Not my hard work. Not my effort. I guess it's a, it's a two way street. Maybe it's 50 50, right? So you start talking shit. I work my ass okay. off, y'all buy tickets. I make music, y'all shake ass. I hope she puts on a great show. I'm not, I'm, not your friends, but I'm not your friend. I'm not your friend. I want you to know that I'm going to solidify that right now. I am not your fucking friend. Where's the law? Like back two years ago when she was being rude to her fans. And guess what? She ended up having one of the biggest songs in the entire world. But I understand where she's coming from because essentially she's making it clear, I'm a celebrity and when it comes down to celebrities, they don't owe you anything. I mean, I shop at Target when I can. Like does Target, does, does the CEO and the owner of Target owe me letters? You know, just because I, you know, shop or eat at my local taco, taco truck, should the owner or the person who's the co-owner of the truck, should they be writing me letters and telling me how much they care about me? Should they want to come out and personally meet me? I mean, it would be nice if the owner of Target wanted to personally meet me or if the person at your favorite restaurant wanted to come out and shake your hand and thank you for your support. It'd be nice, but they don't owe you anything because they didn't beg you to come out and support their restaurant. I agree. And it's a, it's a mutually beneficial relationship. P fans also act like they're doing these celebrities a favor. Like, I'm doing you a favor. And it's like, sure, you're contributing to their success, but don't act like you're not benefiting from their music. You like their fucking music. That's why you're a fan. That's why you are tuned into what they're doing is because you like their art. You, it's, it's benefiting you in some type of way. Whether it, it, it's music that makes you feel good, it's music that helps you get through hard times or, you know, gets you through your workouts at the gym, it's benefiting you. So why are you acting like, oh, I'm only doing you a favor? Like, fuck out of here. The delusion. They don't have to write you a letter. They don't even have to go on social media and tell you thank you for posting their food on your story. They don't owe you shit because you don't have to support them. So I get why a lot of times people like entertainers like Doja Cat and celebrities like Sydney Sweeney or Beyonce in general don't really give a fuck to try to interact with their oh, fans the, uh, because in the back of their the mind they see it as what's in it for me why should I do that what a waste of time why should I waste my energy if you want to support me great if you don't all well a good example is even Tyler now Tyler got a lot of backlash a couple of days ago because if y'all didn't know people were calling her an uppity African 
because she's from South Africa, and essentially she tried to ask Halle Bailey and Lil Nas X during her VMA speech. The fact that people made this into a, like, oh, y'all don't like her because she's African? I thought that was extremely fucking goofy. And even bringing up, oh, she's South African, so that what does that have to do with any fucking thing? Like, bro, I hate everybody. Even though both her arms are perfectly fine, she could have held that shit herself. People always do this to deflect from behaviors. You don't like her because she's pretty. You don't like her because she's South African. And you don't like Africa. You are so dumb. Now, her so doing dumb. that in general kind of rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And it even put a bad taste in my mouth. Because why can't you hold your own award? Like, that's rude. Like, I've never seen anybody do that ever. So, for her to do that, people automatically thought that she was a uppity African. Like, thought she was all that because she was a... That was unnecessary to say, though. And, and, and what's his face? Armand is the one who said that. I don't really understand why her being racially ambiguous and her being South African has anything to do but with But I her. feel like he's the only one that I saw saying that. I didn't really see... Well, granted, I didn't look that deep into the situation. I ain't gonna lie. But when, when I did see people speaking on this on, like, TikTok and whatnot, they were just speaking about her. Actually, I saw way more people defending her. Let's be clear. The the more popular opinion was that, oh, protect Tyler at all costs. Y'all are doing too much. That was the way more popular opinion. But even when I saw people criticize her, people wasn't bringing up that she's African at all. I only heard Armand say that. I, I saw a lot of people being like, oh, she's just rude. And, oh, she's feeling herself too much, girl. You just got here and calling her the water girl or whatever. Being a bratty diva. But I don't give a fuck about yeah, that. Yeah, she was being a diva. Yeah, she was being a brat. Yeah, yeah she was really a little entitled. <laughs> But I don't know her cares. being racially ambiguous and her being a South African has anything to do with that. Yeah, South Africans are actually very laid back, open, real, fun loving, and humble as hospitable people. So when people do the whole uppity African, I mean, thought to myself, well, damn, maybe she shouldn't have told anybody she was African. Maybe people would be constantly picking her apart. I, mean, I have been open with my audience for a long time. I've talked about family issues, relatives who ain't shit. I talk about financial stuff. I talk about psychological things, mental health, ADHD, being on medication, all types of stuff. And guess what? When I opened up about taking Adderall like a couple years ago because much. I have ADHD and I have a hard time sometimes focusing, tell me why people were saying, oh, that's probably why you big ass lost weight because of those fucking Adderall drugs. See, that's why you And then there was somebody who really went out of their way one time where, let's say I, made a, like, I literally made a video talking about a very sensitive topic. And someone did not agree with what I said. So instead of telling them they didn't agree and trying to literally counteract me and tell me that I don't make any sense, they literally went out of their way to say, you know, I literally used to like your videos, but now you're literally just like your sister. I was like, bitch. What? Who's your sister? Don't make me get my gun. It makes See? you wonder why you This is open why up you don't so share people stuff. People are scared of especially People will throw it back at you. It's so fucking weird. That's why oftentimes a lot of celebrities try their best to just lay on the radar. Lay low. And that's why you don't see someone getting just like your sister. Bitch, you don't know him or his sister. You're such a weirdo. What the hell? Your baby TV show going on live, interacting, communicating. It's a very weirdo thing to say. You don't know them. So it makes me understand why Beyonce ain't got no fucking personality and she damn near look possessed like she's on that demon time or some shit. It would be nice if a lot of them were nice and cool and polite. Even the ones that you see on the street who are nasty to okay. photographers or rude to photographers. Obviously in many cases, him. a lot of them are trying to protect themselves. Mm-hmm. When people are mean, they even you, him. like some of y'all out there who are probably mean and not nice to strangers, I don't attribute people who are mean as being horrible people. Sometimes people are mean as a defense mechanism. Some people are mean and cold and standoffish as a means to protect themselves from outsiders or potential Facts. threats. I don't so know if someone's you. not nice, I understand why. Because of this crazy ass heathen ass world we live in. I mean, there's been instances where so many celebrities are approached by fans and approached by paparazzi, and they do the most absurd, outlandish shit, and then they flip it and they literally throw your reaction in your face and think that your pitch perfect should always be smiling all the time. Are you WWE? Whoa, whoa. Nice to see you. I'm with the John Cena at WWE. Thank you for asking. Why is that you? No, thank you for asking to take your video. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. So I get why people like Beyonce is soulless and you don't really see shit in her eyes. All I will say is this, when it comes down to entertainers, they're not your fucking friends, they're not your aunts, they ain't your granny, they ain't your cousins. When it comes down to them, they don't owe a shit. If you see a very entertainer on the street or you see a very influencer on the street, don't be so shocked if they're nasty or mean to you or they'd be like, 
and they give you a nasty attitude. I've met some entertainers living out here in LA who I thought were going to be cool, and then they ended up being nasty motherfuckers. We don't need to do something to be nice to us because that's what your friends are for. Think to myself, oh, that's what you said. That's what your daddy's for. That's what your pappy's for. That's what your pappy's for. And that's what a lot, that's what your kids are for. That's what your fucking dogs are for. If you want somebody to give you emotional support or comfort or kindness or sweetness, get a fucking Yorkie. Yes, that's the problem. These people who operate this way, they don't have any real friends in real life. They have no actual real human connections with other people <laughs> so that's why they they project this bullshit on you online it, it's so blatantly obvious because i would fucking never i would never do any of like who i don't know these niggas i don't care about none of these people they don't they don't owe me shit they don't know me i don't know them dog get a kitty cat or some shit i'm not gonna expect something from them for, and we can't always rely on entertainers to connect with us but that definitely is being like constant. facts I agree with this video 1000%. I agree with everything that was stated, okay? And like I said, it, it's just so twisted because these fans, they expect so much and they're so entitled to uh, these celebrities because they feel like, oh, well, I'm supporting you, so you need to give back in some type of way. You need to do this, you need to do that. It's like, this is reciprocal. You're supporting them and they in turn are providing you with entertainment or good music or whatever the case. So you both are benefiting. Why are you asking for more? Like, oh no, I, I need more from you. I need more information or tell me more about your life. Like y'all are sick in the fucking head. This is, this is a weird situation. People need lives. You need to go outside <laughs> and connect with people in, in your life. And maybe you wouldn't have these weird, you know, uh, viewpoints on, on life and, and with these celebrities. It don't make no sense. Y'all let me know what y'all think though. Let me know what other videos you've been watching. I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.